Hi everyone, it's Amanda. Today I'm going to be doing a book recommendation video based on if you loved the TV show Wednesday, but add a little bit of spice. So this video is mostly 18 plus, so just know that, but I do have some YA recommendations that are more gothic romance based. So these recommendations are all going to be dark romance, fantasy romance, gothic romance. So basically an excuse for me to give you dark romance books, but I am excited for this. I loved the TV show Wednesday. I thought it was so good. It's so rewatchable. It had a whodunit. I loved every part of it. And I'm also very much a Wednesday Enid stan. So that's my thoughts on that. If you love romance books like me, be sure to like and subscribe down below for more bookish content. I'd love to have you here and let's get into some of my recommendations. So first up we have Hollow Heathens by Nicole Fiorina. This one is perfect for lovers of Wednesday because it has that mystery plot to it, but it also has that really dark gothic atmosphere. There's witches involved. There's a mystery about the town and its history. So you have everything there and there's a really good romance as well. Fellow Fallen, she is going back to her hometown of Weeping Hollow, which is a town that only appears for you if you are meant for it. And then it disappears, never lets you out if it doesn't want you to leave either. So it's kind of this witchy town and she had never really grown up there. She had left when she was very young. Now she has to uncover all of these mysteries about it. Then enter Julian. He's one of the four Hollow Heathens. These men wear masks around town and they are very feared because if they take their mask off, then you will see your worst fear and nobody has lived through seeing their real face. So you can imagine we have a love story between the two, but we also have some sinister things happening in the town where these two, Fallen and Julian, have to team up together to solve what's going wrong in the town and how to break this curse of the heathens so definitely recommend this one it was so good then we have be still my heart by emily mcintyre and sav r miller so this one i put in here because it's a whodunit and i feel like the show wednesday had that whodunit sort of thing but this one is not as dark gothic romance but i love this book so i will take any excuse to put it in a video in this one we follow lincoln and sloan sloan is a detective and she is pulled towards skelm island this place where there's been murders happening and nobody can solve the case then we have grumpy lincoln who's just trying to stay afloat with his lobster business but he keeps uncovering dead bodies people are setting him up for the murders and now he's a suspect so these two work together to solve this case he is very reluctant at first to help but he also doesn't want to be a suspect so they end up in these forced proximity situations together they have a lot of chemistry it's kind of a slow burn and i thought it was so so good the whodunit was pretty satisfying at the end and also has that coastal town sort of feel with the lighthouse and just creepy watery town vibes next we have one of my favorite dark romance authors and that is jay rose this is departed whispers this is her paranormal romance that is also why choose so we follow multiple men in this one we follow emery she has gone a little bit to the dark side she is a witch and she's gotten into dark magic she left her coven as a child and now her three childhood best friends come back into her life because reaper's hollow is in danger so she has to save her town from destruction does it sound familiar i feel like it does but add a little bit more spice a little more men involved and smile it also has that dark witchy vibe, which reminds me a lot of the Secret Society in Wednesday. I also have to mention her other series, the Blackwood Institute Trilogy. I have to, I know. If you've been on my channel for a while, you've heard this in every recommendation video ever, but I love this series and I think it's a very much darker book. So it's the darkest probably on this list, but this one takes place in an asylum. It still has that misfits coming together type of vibe. So that's why I say it still fits in this this video. Also a why choose romance, but the mystery plot in this is so intriguing. Basically our main character, Brooklyn, she is in a psychiatric ward because she has committed a crime.
crime. Now they want to send her to Blackwood Institute, which is one of the last places people will turn to in order to be put back into society. So she agrees to go to Blackwood Institute. She doesn't have much hope for it, but there she meets all her men. And there's a lot going on that she didn't realize that she's connected to within this facility. And there's just a whole lot going on. She's connected to these men. Her past comes up. You get to see like what really happened with her crime. Was she right? Was she wrong? And your head is always spinning while reading this book because you don't know what's real and what's not real. It has a lot of like Shutter Island vibes to me, but just darker. Then we have Lovely Bad Things by Trisha Wolf. This one is pretty dark as well. It has a lot of cult type vibes. So if you're looking for that, this one is good for that. We follow a crime investigator and then a professor that ends up being locked up. So in the beginning of the book, Helen is obsessed with finding the killer to this notorious killing. And she thinks that it is this professor, Professor Locke. She is adamant that he is the one who committed the crime. So she gets him locked up. She actually goes on trial against him, which is never heard of in her lifetime. She usually stays out of it. You know, she's just the crime scene investigator. But in this one, she felt so passionate as to this man needs to be behind bars. But then she finds out there's another killing similar to the one that she locked him up for. And now she needs his help to solve the case because he is in philosophy. And there's a lot of connections between philosophy and the crime scene. So they have to team up together to figure out what actually happened and who is murdering these people. There is a serial killer on the loose and you don't know who it is. And it is a good time. It is messed up. And it's also a little bit academia. So if you like that as well, this one's a good one. Continuing on with more cult vibes, I have Her Soul to Take by Harley LaRue. This one's another paranormal romance, just purely on here because the smut is hot. I think it was a little bit insta-lovey. We follow a girl who's obsessed with like ghost hunting. And then we also follow a demon named Leon. So it is a lot of fun. I don't want to give too much away because it is kind of a shorter read, but it was a fun time back when I read it about two years ago on Halloween. Then I have to mention There Are No Saints and There Is No Devil by Sophie Lark. And this one we follow Mara. She is a pretty much starving artist in San Francisco. And then we have Cole who is a notorious artist who is also a serial killer. And he has a nemesis who also is a serial killer and an artist. So he has this rivalry with another artist and he ends up becoming obsessed with Mara and wanting her to be his next victim. But while doing so, he becomes so obsessed with her that he like wants her. So they end up having a romance and connecting and it is so good. It's so good because the other guy wants to get Mara as well. Like the other guy's out to kill her and then Cole is trying to protect her but also wants to kill her. So you're like, what is going to happen? The second book is so freaking good and it's so action packed. Then I also have to mention Gatikana by Runix. This one is very dark academia. It has a very similar setting to what we see in the show. I didn't love this romance all that much. It's very insta lovey, but if you can get past that, I think it's a really good one. I think the aesthetic was my favorite part of the whole book. So if you're there for that, you should definitely try this one out. We also have this really mysterious school that's been there for a long time. So if you like the setting, definitely check it out. But I know a lot of people love the romance in this book as well. It is between a professor and student, so you have that taboo element as well. And there's also another mystery because people have been like jumping off the roof and kids have been dying and there's a mystery involved. Then we have Strangled by Marie Anne. This is a male male erotic horror and it was so creepy, so disturbing, dark and unsettling. So I feel like it fits this video really well. We follow Lycan and Lucian. So Lycan is going to move into this abandoned house that everybody in town thinks is haunted because two people were murdered there in the past and they never found the son of these two characters. And guess who's living in the house still? The son who is Lucian. So Lucian's very upset that somebody's living in his house now and he's like, mm, 
I think I'm going to get rid of them. But then he becomes obsessed with Lycan in a different way and thinks that he can become part of his plan. Next we have Slashers and Secrets by A.R. Breck. This one is perfect because it has a stalker romance also a who is it like who is the stalker who is the killer the slasher in town and we also have a romance going on a forbidden romance they shouldn't really be together right but they have this pull toward each other it has very much touch her and you'll die vibes so if you like that this one is definitely a good one i need to read ar breck's other books immediately especially wicked little sins i need to get on that series then we have master of salt and bones by carrie lake this is a gothic romance between two characters that hold a lot of secrets lucian and isa so isa is going to take care of his mother so She's going to be a caretaker and he's known for being like a monster. Okay, so he doesn't have a good reputation, but she is drawn to him and him to her. So you have some secrets to reveal. There's steam, there's intrigue, there's mystery. So this one has all of the Wednesday Adams vibes. Next we have Phantom by Greer Rivers. This is a modern day Phantom of the Opera retelling set in New Orleans and also has a mafia take on it. We're following understudy Scarlet. She's at the French Quarter and the thing about that is that there's two families that like own different parts of the town. So like the Mafia families and Soul is like the phantom of the French Quarter and he becomes obsessed with Scarlet and you get to see their journey with that. Once she becomes in danger, he's like, I am going to protect you. Touch her and you die. And she's also going through some mental health issues. So there's some bipolar rep, some panic disorder rep, and then you get the steamy time with pianos involved. They have chemistry. They have chemistry. Then to end off the video, I just wanted to give you some young adult recommendations in case you're not into the steam, you're not into the smut. So first we have Belladonna by Adeline Grace. This one has the romance, the gothic fantasy, the mystery elements, and it's done really well in my opinion. I loved that there was like two or three plot twists at the end. We follow our main character, Signa. She has always been cursed by death. So death has surrounded her and her family for years. She's convinced that death is out to get her, that all he does is come after people she loves. Death is personified in this book, so he is a character. So now all she has is her last remaining relatives, the Hawthorns, but they are still grieving the loss of their mother and wife. When she gets to the mansion, though she discovers that there was a restless spirit and that she may have been murdered so there's a murder mystery and there's a lot going on in this but the romance is so good and the mystery is also really good in my opinion then we have house of salt and sorrows i feel like this one is a great dark fantasy read it doesn't have as much romance in it it has a little bit but i loved this one it's about a cursed family so these sisters have all been dying one by one and slowly you uncover secrets around why they are dying and this one sister as she tries to figure out how to stop the curse. I loved this one when I read it. It has such a dark tone to it and these sisters are in the situation where they get up in the middle of the night they end up dancing with strangers but the stranger might just be something more sinister and it was really creepy but at the same time really whimsical and lastly we have lake's edge this is one that i read recently it was a really good one so we follow violetta or letta and rowan mainly in this book rowan is the monster character that is in this mansion and together they have to find out how to unbind rowan from lord under who is this sinister godlike person so there's a lot going on in this but the ending was so good and it has a slow start but once you get into it I thought it was so intriguing I do feel like a lot of gothic books have that slow start I think it's to contribute to the unsettling feeling that you'll have and to get you acquainted with the surroundings but this one was also really good for a cursed type fantasy read so those are all the book recommendations I have for you today if you loved the show Wednesday if you liked this video be sure to 
like and subscribe down below and i will see you in my next one bye guys